Yeah, Yukti Bhasha, uh, you are right, absolutely correct. See, there is a Sanskrit version also, but when it was uh, uh, rewritten in Sanskrit, we do not know. But the original uh, seems to be, because the Sanskrit version is not uh, very profound Sanskrit or flawless. So, one is very clear that it is uh, some translation of this Malayalam version into Sanskrit. So, let us leave that aside. So, it is a text which is authored in local language of Kerala. That is why they say Yukti Bhasha. Bhasha, I mean in some sense, see there are two ways of even uh, understanding the title. So, Yukti Bhasha is basically a compound word. There is a word Yukti, there is a word Bhasha. So, one way to understand this compound is, so the text in which the rationales are being spoken about, Yuktayaha Atra Bhashyante, this could be the way the compound can be derived. The other way is Yuktayaha Bhashayam Yatra Nirupitaha. Bhasha refers to some local language always. So, Yuktayaha, the rationales have been explained in some local language and that could be the origin of the text, the name of the text, Yukti Bhasha. Anyway, so this is authored by Jeshtha Deva. So, Jeshtha Deva, who was also a contemporary of Nilakantha, he is supposed to have lived around um, the beginning of 16th century. So, this Yukti Bhasha is the only text which is available with us today, which is devoted purely to deal with the rationales of the various procedures and formulae which have been enunciated in various other texts. So, since you asked Yukti Bhasha and Tantra Sangraha, in fact, they are quite uh, related texts. In a sense, right at the beginning of Yukti Bhasha, so Jeshtha Deva has clearly stated that I am writing this text in order to elucidate the principles which have been laid down in Tantra Sangraha. So, he should be a slightly um, later. later than Nilakantha, I mean uh, age wise this is what one can understand from this statement because Nila Tantra Sangraha, correct. So, this period of Tantra Sangraha is extremely uh, clearly known, I mean uh, it is 1500. In fact, uh, this is supposed to have been written in just a, a week's time. So, the code right at the beginning is He Vishnu Nihitam Kritsnam. So, this when you try to put it in Katapayadi, it comes to some number uh, in 1500. And uh, the, at the end of this uh, text, we have uh, again a string Lakshmisha Nihita Dhyanaihi. So, these two strings have been taken up as the codes representing the Kalidina by the commentator Shankara Variyar. And he says, this is the beginning of the text, this is the end of the text and therefore, this uh, seems to be written in just a week's time. Okay, so, let us uh, keep it aside. Now, coming back to this uh, Yukti Bhasha. So, Yukti Bhasha primarily claims to be an exposition of the algorithms in Tantra Sangraha. Tantra Sangraha is purely an astronomical text. But when we look into uh, this Tantra Sangraha, there are certain uh, uh, verses which give the expressions or rather approximations for sine function and so on. Per se, it does not deal with the, the kind of series, uh, but uh, Yukti Bhasha in the first half of it, it can be broadly divided into two sections. The first half is mathematics and the later half is astronomy. So, the first seven chapters are uh, mathematics. It starts with basic arithmetic and then multiplication, addition, what are the various techniques which can be used and all that. And then to the sixth and the seventh chapter, it deals with this infinite series and the various uh, fast convergent approximations which I was referring to. So, one does not find uh, such a detailed treatment of this mathematics in Tantra Sangraha. But uh, some clues are available, so based on that uh, this author seems to have developed, but this statement is clearly found. In the later half of course, it is purely dealing with astronomy and the various kinds of problems which have been dealt with in Tantra Sangraha and they have been elucidated so well in this starting from the 8th chapter. So, this Yukti Bhasha is a very, very important text and uh, some serious scholars of recent times who have been physicists also, uh, they have uh, taken serious interest in thoroughly analyzing the text Yukti Bhasha and uh, they have come to the conclusion that uh, it will be appropriate to call this text as the first textbook on calculus. 
So, I mean that is the kind of uh, acclaim that this text has acquired in recent times. For the first time in fact to the western audience, so this was brought to notice by Charles Wish. So, Charles Wish uh, who happened to be one of the servants of the East India Company, so who served here in the Malabar region. So, he seems to have uh, closely interacted with some of these pundits around that time and uh, he has uh, come up with a very, very important article on the quadrature. The title itself goes to some 3, 4 lines. So, wherein he has referred to four texts. So, Tanta Sangraha, Yukti Bhasha, Sadratna Mala. So, this is how, uh, so he quotes from all these texts and uh, he says that uh, conclusively in fact he says that this is actually the findings of the natives, so much before that. But historically it is a strange thing to think of somebody revealing this to the western world around 1830s and uh, this never uh, is documented in any of the his texts of history of mathematics in the western world. So, this is something which is quite strange for almost a century and yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, see the issue is uh, one should not even uh, say uh, that uh, Jeshtadeva and Nilakantha, but uh, these people are trying to uh, so only elucidate on uh, the kind of coding which is available which is ascribed to Madhava. So, Madhava if he were to come up with this infinite series and the verse which is ascribed to him, then obviously there should have been a certain technique which has been employed by him. And this technique clearly points to the fact that uh, he has got the foundations of calculus quite precisely. So, that is what I would say. As far as Tantra Sangraha is concerned, since you said, I would like to uh, mention that this is again a very important text in the sense, wherein we have a very, very clear statement of uh, the fact that Mercury and uh, Venus move around the sun. So, this is something which is very important from the viewpoint of the history of astronomy. So, the recognition that planets are moving around sun is itself a great departure. So, from the ge geocentric picture which the universe had till that period.